All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I'm really excited about today's guest. Now, I'm going to let him introduce himself a bit, but I've just kind of been watching a lot of content that he's been on recently. And he has saved his own life through diet. I just want to put that out there for you guys, because we talk about healing health conditions. This person, this man here who's with me was told he just had a very short time to live and he's still here. So these types of stories are very important that we continue to share in the community. So without further ado, if you would uh, just tell everyone who you are, what you do, and we'll just jump right in. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this is an exciting time for me. Uh, so I'm Al Dannenberg. I'm a periodontist. I got my dental degree way, way back in the early 70s. That's 1970s. Probably most of you weren't even born yet because I'm 73 years old now. And um, I specialize in a area of dentistry called periodontics. So I basically treat gum disease and jawbone infections and everything that's related to that. And I was doing that for 44 years until um, 2018. And in 2018, some strange things happened. But before that, maybe six years or so before that, I started to change my lifestyle quite a bit and went from a standard American diet, like some people do these days, and switched into a paleo diet at the age of uh, 66. I learned this lifestyle, literally lost over 30 pounds, didn't realize that I was overweight, but I was. It's interesting when you uh, balance your hormones, you don't even have to think about losing weight, it just happens. And um, I went into a more paleo lifestyle of exercise and, and sleeping better and, and doing the things that were promoted by the paleo community. And you had a stroke that led you into that. Program. Yeah, exactly. So what happened was I had a stroke um, and at the age of 59. So I had a stroke at the age of 59 and I went into the medical area to figure out how I could take care of myself. Because my doctors who saved my life, conventional medicine saved my life, put me on six or seven medications for the rest of my life, um, which didn't make sense to me, but that's what they said. And they didn't have an answer as to why I had a stroke. So I started investigating the organizations like the American Heart Association, the Diabetic Association, the Cancer Society, all of these organizations that I thought would have an answer to what I was doing wrong. I was following their guidelines, never losing weight, never removing myself from these seven medications. And then at the age of 66 or so, I found a course in a place called the Kripalu Center for Yoga and Health, of all places, right? And they were advertising a five-day course for healthcare professionals on nutrition. And I figured, you know what, this might really hone in all my ideas that I was learning and I would just find that I was doing what I was doing correctly, being the right way to go. Instead, I learned that I was doing everything wrong. And this course was actually paleo oriented at that time. And it changed my life. And it not only changed my life, I came home after five days, my wife and I kind of hit bumped heads together because she was not in agreement with me. And she said, okay, I'll give you 30 days to test this. So we removed all the junk foods from my freezer and refrigerator and pantry. We had seven bags of food to give to our uh, food bank. And I started eating paleo foods. And lo and behold, within two years, I actually started to lose all this weight, maybe 30 pounds or so. And I removed all seven medications from my, my uh, life. I was really what I thought to be an unbelievably healthy guy. And I incorporated the concept of a paleo lifestyle and diet into my periodontal treatment plans. And I would impress my patients who really were interested. And guess what? Only a few were interested. But the ones that were interested 
we started finding phenomenal results in the mouth. And of course, all the science today supports that. If you dig into the PubMed literature, you'll find that that is the case. So I was doing that and I was considering myself as the senior poster boy for a healthy lifestyle. So fast forward to 2018 and I am 71 years old and I was, I, I've been speaking to many organizations around the country and doing uh, consults all over the world. And, and of course, writing a, a bit. And I was seeing clinical patients in my office. So I was asked to speak at Paleo FX in Austin, Texas in April, 2018. I was traveling by plane from Charleston, South Carolina, where I live to Austin, Texas. Um, and, and while I was traveling, I normally carry this big bag on my shoulder. And in the Atlanta airport where I need to make connections, it's a big airport. I usually walk from concourse to con okay, you know. So I, I, I try to walk from concourse to concourse if there's enough time between flights. So there were, or there was enough time. So I was walking from maybe concourse A to concourse D. It's a long walk. And so my bag is on my shoulder. And by the time I almost get to my um, next flight, my shoulder is really getting sore and it's never happened before. So I'm thinking I pulled a muscle, you know, rotator cuff, who knows. Um, went to Austin, did my talk, came back, and the soreness stayed in my arm. And then this is in April 2018, and then the soreness goes to my back, and then it gets to my chest area. And I'm a little stubborn, so I don't do anything about it until maybe August of 2018. And I call my physician who I've been seeing for over 25 years. I see him every year. You know, when I had this uh, stroke, he obviously treated me. So he knows me very well. And so I go to see Billy and I say, you know, I've got this arm that's really sore. Obviously, I tore something. Um, tell me what you think. And he said, I, I really don't know, but obviously you're hurting. And I said, yeah, that's why I'm here. So he does a series of blood tests. So he does a typical blood chemistry test, a blood CBC test, looking at all the corpuscles, you know, the blood vessel uh, cells. And um, everything comes back relatively normal. But he also does another test called a C-reactive protein, which indicates systemic inflammation. It doesn't say if it's active, like acute or chronic, it doesn't say where the inflammation is coming from. And when I've had a blood test like that in the past, the results were like 0.5 or below, which is very normal, very healthy. And this was above 5.0. Something is going wrong. And he says, okay, let's do an MRI. Um, so we, we do an MRI within a few days and he calls me and he says, um, do you want to come into the office or would you like, like to talk about it on the phone? I said, of course, Billy, let's talk on, about it on the phone. How bad can it be? And he says, starts to joke a little bit. And he says, did you fall down some steps? Somebody beat you up? I said, of course not. I, I just was carrying this big, heavy bag and something is torn on my shoulder. And then he gets very serious. And he says, well, the MRI shows a vertebral compression fracture several broken ribs, a hairline fracture on my pelvis, and a soft tissue mass that's sitting on the side of my spinal cord uh, um, around T6. And he says, I think, I think you have either lymphoma, leukemia, or multiple myeloma. Mm. Wow. These three ideas are cancers. I am a healthy guy. How could this possibly be? So he says, we need to call in an oncologist. We do a bunch of other tests, a PET scan, which is a big CT scan that um, injects radioactive glucose to see if there's cancer cells. The cancer cells eat up the glucose and it glows on the x-ray um, itself. And then um, a biopsy of the soft tissue and other specific chemistries or blood work for malignancies. So I'm in my oncologist's office who I'm just meeting for the first time. My wife is there and my two adult children are there. And he's a wonderful guy and he's still my oncologist, um, conventional though. And he tells me that I have IgA kappa 
light chain multiple myeloma with multiple lytic lesions throughout my entire skeleton. And that's why my bones are fracturing. It's like I had severe osteoporosis. And then he tells me this is incurable and I have three to six months to live. Oh my God. Wow. Mm. Do you know what a ton of bricks is dropping on your head? So I knew that it is cancer. I didn't know it was incurable. I didn't know the prognosis. And of course I'm sitting there hearing this information for the first time. So I need, and I'm looking at my wife, you know, I'm trying to figure out the questions to ask. I, I'm saying, well, well, what do I do? And he says, well, tomorrow we're going to start chemotherapy and we'll probably do some radi uh, radiation treatment because the pain in my chest is so severe, it's hard for me to take a deep breath. So um, he said, you probably are not a good candidate for stem cell therapy. And I said, well, if you say it's incurable, why would I be doing chemotherapy because it's so destructive in my body? And he said, well, it's going to put you in remission. And if you're in remission, you're gonna feel a whole lot better, but eventually the disease is gonna come back. We'll need to use more chemotherapy, but a different kind, more caustic, because the previous chemotherapy wouldn't work any longer. So I'm asking him, well, what's going to happen to me? He said, eventually, chemotherapy is not going to work and you're going to die from the manifestations of multiple myeloma. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm kind of geeky and I need to know what that means. And I said, well, how am I going to die? And he says, well, most people with multiple myeloma will either die with kidney failure or internal bleeding because of the severe anemia that develops, or you will um, contract a serious infection and your immune system is so compromised you'll die from an infection. Mm. And I'm saying also to him, well, what about my, the quality of my life? And he said, unfortunately, it will go downhill when you're not in remission. And I said, and this is all going on in just a few minutes now. So I'm saying to him, the only thing that matters, although I have pain in my chest, I feel great. The only thing that matters is my quality of life. And if chemotherapy, is going to decrease my quality of life and destroy my immune system, which is so compromised right now, I'm rejecting chemotherapy. I'm not doing anything. I'll take some radiation in my chest so I can breathe, but you're not putting chemicals in my body. So I started, to, and, and he's concurring with me, and my wife and kids are concurring with that idea, and this decision is all made in a few minutes, and, and I'm suggesting to him that I need to do some independent research to figure out what unconventional protocols I can create or do, uh, find out that makes sense to me to support my immune system and maybe heal my body more naturally. Of course, he's telling me this is an incurable cancer but he's allowing me to do that. And that's what I do. Uh, so I leave that office and I'm scampering to find information about how to treat multiple myeloma in bizarre ways. And so I'm doing a lot of deep research in PubMed. I'm contacting a few integrated physicians that I know, getting some ideas, which I have completely discarded at this point, but that's how I started on the path. So I created my unconventional cancer protocols and I've tweaked them many, many times. And for the next year, I did pretty well. I mean, I wasn't in remission. I wasn't getting worse, but I wasn't getting better. And the radiation in my chest area because of the broken ribs did heal the pain. It had nothing to do with the cancer. So I was great until let's fast forward to August of 2019. So in August of 2019, I know my bones are fragile. I didn't really know what that meant. I had several pathological fractures up until this point. So in August of 2019, a year later, I'm standing in my bathroom, brushing and flossing my teeth, which I know how to do. And my feet are planted on the ground. Like obviously if you brush and floss your teeth, you, that's the way you stand in front of a mirror. And my trash can is to my left. So I am twisting, you can imagine I'm twisting 90 degrees to my left to throw the dental floss in the trash can. When I twist to my left, 
my right femur snaps in half. Oh my gosh. I crash to the ground. When I crash to the ground, I break two ribs uh. and my right humerus snaps in half. I am writhing on the floor in pain, screaming. At that point, again, you need to understand quality of life is everything to me. So I know that I've damaged my body beyond repair, I'm thinking, because I'm looking, I can see my arm and my leg are at angles that I could never get to. Mm. Well, obviously, I've broken these bones badly. I can't move. My wife comes running in. She's an RN, but of course, that means nothing at this point. And, and she's emotional, of course. Yeah. And she calls EMS, emergency services, and they try to negotiate a gurney because my bathroom, you know, we have little tiny halls. Gurney is, doesn't bend. So it's hard for them to get me into a gurney. And eventually they get me into a gurney. They take me to the hospital and I'm really ready to die. And I want to die because I know with all these broken bones and I'm assuming everything on my right side is broken, I can never be the way I was. And that's not the way I want to be then. So they take me to the emergency room. Eventually at the hospital, they fix my right femur because my right uh, femoral artery is ready to um, um, be punctured by the broken bone. Therefore, I could bleed to death. So they fix my right femur. My right humerus is not fixed. Of course, the ribs don't get fixed. And um, I reject everything at the hospital and they put me into a hospice hospital to die. So I am now in a hospice hospital to die. I am catheterized. I am heavily drugged on narcotics. I'm miserable, mm. as you might imagine. Yeah. And one week later, a hurricane is threatening to come to Charleston. So Charleston is one of those cities that is threatened by hurricanes. And this is called uh, Dorian. And this hurricane is moving at one mile an hour with 187 mile winds. And it's going to hit right where the hospice hospital is. So the hospice hospital is ordered to evacuate all of their patients. They have no idea where to send me. My wife, as a nurse, arranges to get a hospital bed in my house, and they send me to my house. I'm still under hospice care at home, catheterized, drug, you know, as miserable as I can be. But I'm at home now. The hurricane comes through, the power goes out, you know, hospital beds are electric, so the hospital bed doesn't move. It's hot and sticky in my house, 90 degrees outside, no power, you know, miserable. Eventually, 12 hours or so later, we get power back. My wife um, gets a nurse to come into the house, and she gives me a little tough love, and she said, look, you're not a victim, you're a survivor. You did amazingly well with these unconventional cancer protocols until these fractures occurred. And let's get you back on these cancer protocols. I'll get a physical therapist in the house and we will get you back to new. Of course, those are nice words, but who knows? I'm still drugged with narcotics and a catheter and everything. Um, we get a, a, a physical therapist. He works with me. I eventually get out of bed, start walking, get out, the catheter out of my body, uh, and I had this thing in for 30 days, which is totally miserable. Um, and I start to rally, amazing. And I revoke hospice. And the following month, October of 2019, I am able to get into a car and go to my oncologist's office. And he is amazed that I'm alive. So at that point, I'm back on my... Um, unconventional cancer protocols. And he tells me a new immunotherapy drug that has recently been approved by the FDA that maybe could help with my cancer because I have this malignant plasma cell cancer of the multiple myeloma. And it's not chemotherapy, it's very specific and it supports the immune system. So I allow that to happen and I continue with him. And fast forward to May, 2020, and on May 8th, 2020, he's asking, he's recommending for me to get a new CT scan, um, um, PET scan. So I had one in, in uh, August when I was diagnosed. And then June of 2019, showed lots and lots of cancer. And this May uh, uh, 8th, 2020, I get this PET scan at night. 
he calls me at my home and he says, get your wife on speakerphone. And she's on speakerphone and, he's, and he says, I want to read you the radiologist report. And he reads the report and basically says, there are no active cancer cells in your entire body. And I said to George, he's my oncologist, I said, George, wait a minute, read that again. Read that again, because I want to make sure I hear what he's saying, because I'm floored. My wife is crying. I'm kind of floating off the floor, and my oncologist is shocked. Now, that is not, in reality, that isn't a cure, because PET scans only show moderate to severe cancer cells. They don't show uh, smaller clumps of cells. And I still have a, a number of, quite a number of um, dysfunctional IgA antibodies that are produced from malignant plasma cells. So I still have cancer, but um, this is a phenomenal statement and I'm elated. So as of today, I feel fantastic. I am not in remission, uh, but I haven't cured my, and I haven't cured my cancer, but the PET scan shows no active cancer cells. And these unconventional cancer protocols, I think, are the reason why I have improved my immune system to a level that is probably better than 98% of the population in the United States. You started doing a meat-based kind of a carnivore diet. When did that enter? Sure. Yeah. So, sure. So let's, let's see. I, when I was diagnosed with cancer, I was already on paleo yes. and I switched to a paleo autoimmune di diet, which is not carnivore. I've done that and then, yeah. Yes. And then, and then when I did some research and found out about carnivore, uh, and went to uh, research the Paleo Medicina Clinic in Budapest, Hungary, which we can talk about. Yeah. And I saw the, the, the case reports. I started a strict carnivore diet on January 1st, 2020. Okay. So I have been on carnivore and I am on carnivore today based on the Paleo Medicina game plan. So let me tell you a little bit about Paleo Medicina if you want. Yeah, well, my viewers are very familiar because I follow okay. a similar protocol. I don't do calorie restriction, but I'm on a very high fat carnivore diet where right. I do a lot of dairy. I do the organ meats, but look, definitely let's talk about your experience with it because I am all about, um, you know, spreading the word about how healing this can be for the body. Amazing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well let me go back a little bit. Um, again, I mentioned I'm kind of geeky. So everything has to make sense to me. It has to be proven to me. Um, so, you know, it, it, if you're in an airplane and you're looking out the window on the tarmac, you can just see a little bit, you know, people putting stuff in the plane and maybe some cars are driving around on the tarmac. And that's about all you can see. And as the plane takes off, you see a little bit more and you maybe see some roads along the airport. And, and as it goes higher and higher, you can see main thoroughfares and, and trees and lakes and all kinds of stuff. So you get to 30,000 feet and you see everything. And you have this unbelievable perspective when you're way up high compared to when you are on the tarmac. It, it still exists, but you don't see it. And that's how I view our human experience. If I looked at diets 10 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, it still doesn't compare with our evolutionary way of the human species for two and a half million years. Certainly the last 160,000 years of modern Homo sapiens. So when you look at that evolutionary progression, you see our human species much more carnivore yeah. than omnivore. Although we are omnivores, we can eat plants, yeah. but our digestive system is not designed for the majority of plants. That's fascinating. And there has never been any society in evolution that has been a vegan and has survived mm -hmm. because our human DNA requires animal-based products. That's the way it is. You can't change it. If you say, I don't like eating meat, you can't change. You can't say, I'm a butterfly, but I don't want my wings. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. 
You have to be what you have been designed to be. And our DNA code requires animal-based products, saturated animal fat. Give me a break, right? So anyhow, so once I understood that, then I did this research about the Paleo Medicina Clinic. And I found that this clinic has been in existence for about 10 years. They are made up of obviously physicians. They are only treating humans, not rats and mice. These are real human studies. And they only treat severe chronic diseases and cancers, cancers that are curable, cancers that are incurable. And they put their patients on their strict animal-based diet, which they call a ketogenic I mean, a paleolithic ketogenic diet, which is not just a keto diet, not just a paleo diet. It is a diet that is strict with a fat to protein ratio of two to one measured in grams because the fat is the critical element. That's what puts you in ketosis. And that is what satiates you. You don't want to have hundreds of grams of protein and a little fat. You need to have that fat to protein ratio to be effective. And of course the carbs are minimal, maybe 20 grams of carbs or less. They do include some plants if they're basically paleo type plants, um, but for the sickest people, it's strictly animal based. And the results that they publish are mind blowing. So once I saw this, I'm thinking, Look, I'm a, I'm a study of N equals one. I can't wait 10 years for the medical community to say this has been proven to be correct because I'm gonna be dead by then. So I know that I have no problem experimenting with my body and I did this. So that is now my diet. And that's one of my unconventional cancer protocols. The other part of the story that Paleo Medicine Clinic doesn't emphasize um, is my gut microbiome. They do say, if you eat healthy, you will have a healthy gut microbiome and actually prevent um, a leaky gut. Mm -hmm. That's true, but I wanna hasten it a little bit more. So I really want to improve my gut microbiome and I've done a lot of research and I use spore-based probiotics, which are the only probiotics that really germinate in the gut because they're resistant to the acid. And then they do the other benefits of other types of spores. I mean, other types of probiotics. So I know that I can enhance my, my gut microbiome. And as a matter of fact, there is a test called, or, or a, um, uh, um, a uh, monitoring method uh, called alpha diversity that identifies the the number of species in your gut microbiome and the individual volume of each of those species. And that's called alpha diversity. And all the research, especially in primal societies like the um, Haz, um, Hadza in Tanzania, Hadza in Tanzania, show that the more alpha diversity, the stronger your immune system and the healthier you are. And my alpha diversity is the, in the 98th percentile, which is quite amazing. So that's what I do. The third thing that I do, which is interesting, and, and, and that is this, cancer is a disease of metabolic dysfunction. So I can take care of that by diet mm -hmm. and, and, and dysfunction of the immune system which certainly part of the uh, um, gut microbiome has a lot to do with, but mitochondrial dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Mitochondrial dysfunction, these are little organelles that are inside of almost every cell in our body except red blood cells, and they produce the energy. It's just like batteries in a flashlight. That, that's the only reason that the light glows when you turn the switch on in a flashlight because the batteries are active. But if you leave the switch on, continuously the light dims and eventually goes out because the batteries die. Well, the batteries are the mitochondria of every cell. It gives that cell the energy to do what it is supposed to do. And cancer has some dysfunction in that mitochondria. So what I want to do is to support my cells and especially improve the production of energy or ATP by the mitochondria. And I can do that with a uh, technology called pulse electromagnetic field therapy. So I do that three times a day. So basically like a yoga mat sits underneath my bed um, covers and it turns on and off for maybe a half hour with certain frequencies that are compatible to my cells that support and enhance 
the cellular membrane, and the mitochondria. And wow. those three are my main ingredients to my unconventional cancer protocols. Wow. So you're not taking uh, 20 supplements then? Here's the funny story. When I started doing my unconventional cancer protocols and investigating, I went to an integrative physician who I no longer work with. He had me on almost 80 supplements a day. Oh my gosh. You know, first of all, he never even talked to me about nutrition, which is right. terrible. And the second thing is most of those supplements are synthetic. And the third terrible thing is that if you look at the ingredients of these supplements, yeah, the ingredients, the other ingredients, theoretically inert ingredients are chemicals and preservatives and all kinds of things that are uniquely unhealthy to the gut microbiome. But if you take one and multiply it by 80, you're getting this huge overdose of toxic elements into your gut. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing I've been uh, putting a focus of gut health on my channel. I'm actually going to be interviewing um, one of the gut microbiome researchers from that there, he does all the spore probiotics. Oh, Kiran Krishnan. Yeah. yeah. He's coming on the show in January. Well, Kiran is amazing, oh, cool. wonderful, yeah. brilliant guy. Yes. And I've been using their products myself for the last month. Cause I did a, I have this test here. Um, Thrive reached out to me and I did their gut microbiome test. And oh, so Biome FX. Yeah, I found I found out that I had only sixty two percent of alpha diversity, and I was shocked. I was totally shocked. Yeah. Um. So for the last, I've been working with uh, my friend nutrition with Judy. I'm sure you've heard of her uh, in the carnivore space. She just came out with. I have everything here on my desk. She just came out with this awesome book called The Carnivore Cure, and she has worked with Kirian a lot as well. And so she's got me on a whole gut healing just using the mega spore and a couple other things, but right. I love that you're talking about this because I think it's, you know, carnivore diet's amazing, but some of us need extra support. And then some people are taking all of these supplements and it's like your gut can't absorb these because your gut wall's not healed and you're just pouring chemicals in your body and it's not going to help you. And so, you know, it's, I, I love that this is a, gut health is just something that I'm trying to start preaching more about talking more about um, using my platform because I think it's being missed by a lot of people. I wrote a mini ebook that I published on Amazon two or three months ago, and it's called, is your gut killing you? <sighs> it's a very short, like 58 page mini ebook and it's downloadable on Amazon um, to a Kindle app that you know, you can put on I'll make sure I link it below that. the video so they can download. Is your gut killing you? So it has 295 peer reviewed, cited peer reviewed medical papers to support my thesis. And basically, the gut is the center of all chronic disease. Absolutely. And you have to support it. And you have to support not just the microbiome, but the mucus layer, the epithelial barrier, all these little elements to the gut microbiome, uh, uh, the gut um, tube. But but the fascinating thing is we can do that and there is science to prove that and the spores are the best thing. So I do use um, Microbiome Labs products. I use some other products from EnviroMedica. They make another spore probiotic. I use both spore probiotics. Theirs is called Terraflora Deep Immune because it supports the immune system mm -hmm. in a very unique way also. And, and the whole idea is to get this alpha diversity. And that's where, and that's the, the test that I did. It's a unique test because you can't find Find it anywhere else. The BiomeFX test is actually done or read by a company called Cosmos ID, which is probably the largest uh, company in the world that's doing this, this kind of whole genome sequencing, which mm -hmm. is quite unique. And so uh, you will get there. Your 62% will get up to my 98% or more um, as you work with it. And of course, the diet is critical yes. to make those microbiome um, feed and do what they need to do yeah and all the nutrients you need as you know are eating if, if you eat nose to tail one of the other things is very important and it's not really emphasized much and i do emphasize it with all my coaching clients and i do talk about a gut protocol and the, and the diet and, and the pulse electromagnetic field therapy because i'm kind of doing a shotgun approach but um 
the, the big question is minerals. And a lot of people will say, okay, now you need to take electrolytes drops mm -hmm. here and electrolytes drops there. That's not true. Those Our so primal, toxic. I'm sorry. I said, those things are so toxic. It drives me crazy. And they're not complete too. So, yeah. so the way to get the minerals is the way our ancestors got their minerals and that's drinking real mineral water. Yeah. And here's the problem. And I fell into this problem too. I'm thinking, I don't want to drink the tap water. It's got the fluoride, it's got the junk, it's got all kinds of crap. And maybe it has some minerals, but it just has a lot of junk. So I use filters. So now I'm drinking pure crystal, perfect dead water because all the minerals are gone. I don't care what they say. When you, when you filter out things, you're going to filter out the good stuff as well as the bad stuff. And eventually you have nothing but H2O. You don't have any minerals. And then you can add droplets of this mineral and that mineral and it's all unnatural minerals. The way our primal ancestors got their drinking water is from springs. These, these aquifers that where the rainwater filters through the dirt and the rocks and it pulls out all the minerals that humankind needs, gets into the water system, gets into the springs and you drink it. So my waters now are um, Evian from, from France mm -hmm. or Fiji from Fiji or more better is Gerol Steiner from Germany. Yeah. Gerol Steiner has the highest concentration of minerals that I can find at my local grocery store. Cause I, I think I can find other things, but I'm not going to buy, spend $10 a bottle to drink uh, two or three and I need two or three bottles of, uh, of water a day. I'm not going to do that, but Gerol Steiner is fantastic. It's, I don't like it cause it is uh, carbonated, yeah. but um, what I do is I drink coffee and I have no problem with coffee. But when I boil my water, I boil the Gerol Steiner. All the carbonation goes away, and I have this wonderful high concentration of minerals. Um, I know there's a lot of minerals because my coffee pot has this wonderful sl white sludge that builds up in two or three days. I have to delime it because of all the minerals that are left as, as the water evaporates. But um, this is the way to get your minerals. And that's a very important thing that people need to know. You need to drink real mineral water and it has to be natural pH. You don't want these high pH waters because they're so alkalinizing, they're damaging your gut, um, I mean, your stomach acid. So yeah. they're neutralizing your stomach acid that you don't want to do. Yeah, that's the other, th I mean, there's so much in that what you're saying because a lot of people come to carnivore meat-based diet and they don't know that they have low stomach acid until they start trying to consume meat. And if you're doing it the way that you and I do it, when they're trying to consume the fat, that's when they really run into issues with uh, digestion. And sure. It's, yeah, so you don't want the alkaline water thing is just, it makes me just do that. Every time someone talks about making your body alkaline, I'm like, you're, you, you need stomach acid. You need stomach acid to absorb your minerals, to digest your food. You don't want alkaline water. You don't want al That's just a bad idea. <laughs> it is a bad idea and it's promoted as a healthy. Uh, and then of course, the, this concept of an alkaline diet is just nonsense. Yeah, it's complete nonsense. It, it really is. So, um, so you were able to, to start working with the Paleo Medicina group and you switched your diet, changed everything. And then now here we are today. How, how is everything today? What, what's the, the latest status? So, so I am very cautious because I have a fragile skeleton. Yeah. So I, I don't um, fly in airplanes anymore. Um, I am very careful of how I twist or bend. Um, but I do get out. So I walk about a mile every day um, outside. I use a rollator, like a walker, but a rollator, um, because if I were to fall, it would be catastrophic for me. So I need to make sure that I'm careful. So I use a, a rollator. Um, I, I do actually modified squats and push-ups in the house oh, okay. as best as I can. Um, I even do some high intensity interval training with squats. So I do it very fast, get into an um, anaerobic state. So I know that that is, uh, so I can't, it's hard to breathe. 
Um, so I know that I'm where I need to be. So I do that, you know, HIIT, high intensity interval training, maybe once every seven to 10 days, uh, push ups and regular squats modified, maybe two or three times a week, walking outside once a day. Um, I'm pretty good. I, I used to do pull-ups. Obviously, I can't with my arm. My arm is functional, but not completely. So I have this crack um, in my right humerus that healed uh, in a weird pattern. So my arm doesn't function exactly the way it used to, but I'm doing quite well. Uh, one interesting side note is that when I had my femur, my right femur repaired, and I've had a lot of broken bones. My left femur was broken, but my right femur split in half. And when they repaired it, they, I my leg shrunk an inch and a half. So my right leg is an inch and a half shorter than my left leg. I only realized it because I was wobbling when I tried to walk. And wow. it turns out that I had to have all my shoes um, restructured with an inch and a half lift so that I can walk straight now. So that's kind of a weird issue, but I am doing amazingly well. And look, do I look like a guy that's dying from cancer? Now, yeah. mind you, I have incurable bone marrow cancer, wow. um, which is called, like I said, IgA kappa light chain multiple myeloma. My, my oncologist you know, knows that I'm dying, but I may be dying for another 20 years. I don't know. I feel great. And if my chemistry stay the way they are, maybe not getting any better, but certainly not getting any worse. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with my immune system being as robust as it is. Wow, that's such an amazing story. And I love that you just really want to share your message with, with others as well. Um, you, do you do coaching or? Yes. That? Yeah. So once I got this message out, you know, I write quite a bit. So I have a website that I'm active with. My, my website is, is drdannenberg.com, D-R-D-A-N-E-N-B-E-R-G.com. And I write every week. So I have over 500 posts on my website. And I write about gut health and dental health and other chronic diseases, as well as my cancer journey. I have over 30 more, 30, 35 articles just on my cancer journey journey starting uh, when I was diagnosed in September, 2018. I'm very, very open about my experiences. And I talk about some very personal and embarrassing situations that I think are helpful for people that are going through cancer and they don't know how to get answers to their questions. Yeah. Um, there's some stuff out there that uh, you don't know about until it's too late to, uh, to understand. Yeah. But um, I do coaching because now that, that I've gotten known, I've, I've done maybe 39 podcasts in this year already. And so people are starting to contact me and in maybe the last four months or so, five months, I started doing this one-on-one 12 week coaching program where I, I identify, people have to fill out a questionnaire. They have to fill out a three-day food journal. The questionnaire is basically a medical dental questionnaire, three-day food journal. They have to send me their dental x-rays. And here's what's very unique. Most coaches, functional medicine, and even medical doctors that are coaches and other healthcare professionals, they understand the gut sorta, they understand diet sorta, but they do not understand the mouth. And let me tell you, the mouth is as critical or more critical than anything else you're doing. You could be the healthiest person in the world, but if you have a filling that is broken or a bad mercury filling that is putting mercury in your toxicity in your body or something that's jabbing the gum under the gum and you're getting inflammation, this is like a splinter in your finger that you don't even know about. So if you had, you were the healthiest person in the world and you had a splinter in your finger, that splinter creates inflammation in that area 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can't remove it until you remove the splinter. Take the splinter out and all of a sudden the skin heals. But if you take that splinter and stab it into the original puncture wound every week, it will never heal. So if you have a problem in your mouth, like a bad filling or, or infection in the gum or even in the bone from a bad extraction or you had a root canal that is causing infection at the base of the root that you don't even know that's there, it's like a splinter 24 hours a day, seven days a week, compromising your immune system, affecting your blood system all the time. Wow. And it's going to 
not allow your body to heal. So if you are trying to fix the gut and do all these things, but you have this infection in the mouth, you'll never fix the gut. So that's why I have x-rays come to me so I, can, I can't treat them because this is all virtual, but I can help them, direct them to the right biological dentist to maybe get a, a failing root canal out or infection in the bone treated, let them know what I see so that they can be directed in the right place. So I work with their, their diet, I work with their gut, I work with their mouth, I work with uh, pulse electromagnetic field uh, if, if it's indicated to improve their mitochondria. I am trying to get this whole person together in a balanced metabolic state. And I'm all about metabolic flexibility. I do, my, my, my carnivore diet is a little different than paleomedicina because I do ketosis, but I also cycle out of ketosis once a week with maybe 100 to 150 grams of carbs, throw myself out of ketosis into a carb burner, increase my insulin levels, do what my body is designed to do, and the next day I go back to ketosis for another six days. And I can measure my ketone levels with a breath meter. I mean, I'm really into, again, the geeky stuff, but I wanna make sure that I'm doing the things that I need to do to make my body as healthy and my immune system as robust as possible to heal my body from this cancer. And I'm fighting this um, cancer pretty well right now. I would say so. And then taking the time to help others and do what you do speaks volumes about Thank you, you. As a person and then your health as well. I mean, the fact that you're uh, able to do that and you have a heart to do that is just absolutely wonderful. So, well, yeah. look, you know, I'm 73 years old, right? So at this point in my life, I can only give back. And that's what I want to do. There, is, there are so many people that are dealing with a terminal disease. They're, they're, they're diagnosed. They're getting the word. They have no idea what to do. This guy in the white coat or gal in the white coat tell them you need to do this or else. I have had pe pe people come to me as, co for, as clients for coaching that their oncologist fired them fired them because they didn't want to do chemotherapy. Not like, okay, then let's figure out what else we can do. They said, then I can't treat you. Wow. I mean, a person that has a malignancy that is in a life death situation and the oncologist will not treat them is a death sentence wow. unless Absolutely. you know other things to do. So there's always other ways. And there's yeah. always information out there. You just need to dig it, dig into it. And you need to know where to get the information. Yeah. And there are areas, you know, where all this literature, the, all these medical reports are done all over the world. You just need to seek them out. You know, the one thing that question that I have for you is how do you keep this positive mindset about yourself? What else do you do? Because well, when you're faced with this terminal diagnosis, some people will just shut down. They don't want to go seek out literature. They don't want to look for what else. How do you do that on a, on a spiritual level? Well, we're going, yeah. So we're going to get into another topic, which is fantastic. But <laughs> um, first of all, my wife is phenomenal. She is my pillar. So let me tell you, I'm human. I get into states of depression that you can't believe. It, it's going to happen. I don't have that abyss um, very often. But when I do, my wife really helps me to get out of it. But, but I have a, I'm not religious. So I don't profess or, or subscribe to any religion. I don't, I, I don't get into that. But I am extremely spiritual. I believe in our soul. I believe this is going to be very controversial, but I believe that we come back more than once. I believe in reincarnation. I believe that we are here for purposes. I believe that we are our controller of our destiny, although we have different paths that we may follow that may, may be not on our radar, but we basically have lessons to learn in this life that we're living in this physical body. And if we learn it, fantastic. Then we move on to another lesson in another body at another time. If we don't learn this lesson too well, that's okay. We go back and at some point when we're ready to relearn this lesson, to get all the lessons learned, eventually our soul evolves to different levels. And I do believe in a superior being. If you want to call that being God, okay. If you want to call that phenomenal 
supernatural energy force, something else, I have no problem with that either. I do believe in that and that keeps me going because I think this is my purpose now. Again, at the age of 73, if I've ever done anything in 73 years that I think is important for humanity, I think this is it. And I write about it in a way that I've never read anybody else writing about it this way. And I do believe that there are so many people hurting out there that don't know what to do. And I give them some motivation and support. And yeah. I do think I know what to do. And it, the, the bottom line is improve your immune system. And once you improve that immune system, you're, everybody's going to die. But once you improve that immune system, you're going to improve the quality of your life. Yeah. And you will live as well as you can and heal as best as you can until it's over. And when it's over, it's over. Yeah, move on because there's going to be another exciting um, opportunity out there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I have similar views as well. Uh, I don't talk about Good. that so much on my channel, but I well, you can't because not everybody, some people will turn you off. But you'll, you'll look. Lose people, but you know, the people who that you're supposed to reach, I believe that you do. You yes. Know? Yeah. Kind of where I've shifted my platform is who let me let me tell you a funny story. So there was this gentleman, his name is Jack Black, actually, in England, who found out about me and wanted to interview me. And we did two interviews, very long interviews, like an hour and a half each interview. And somehow I just talked about this concept of um, living um, more than one life, um, basically lives between lives, that kind of concept. And his eyes popped open when I told him about it. And he said, my listeners love this stuff. We need to get you back on a third podcast just to, to talk about your um, regressive uh, experiences and going back into previous lives. And so it's funny. I mean, you, like you said, the right person is going to hear it at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we choose specific things in our lives and some that we don't. You know, I have a daughter who's non-speaking autism and I'm certain that she chose me. I'm so certain that she chose me and us and this life. And um, I don't understand a lot of things about it and there's a lot of pain around it, but that's our human experience. And, you know, we're ultimately not gonna understand everything, but if we can have that attitude of, you know, kind of roll with it, surrender with it, help who we can, speak to who we can. I think that life is a lot more enjoyable and, and we find more happiness that way. I agree. Let me tell you, if I may make a comment, because you didn't ask me the question, but I'm going to make a comment. If you would look into under uh, PubMed, you know, you're familiar with PubMed.gov, mm -hmm. look into pulsed electromagnetic field therapy okay. and autism. Okay you will be very impressed with some of the double blind research out there and maybe not so double blind, but observational. It has the potential to be um, a game changer. Awesome. Now is this, does Dr. Terry Walls, I don't know if you're familiar with her. I do. Does I she, do. she does the same thing, right? No. With the, no, she doesn't. She does something different. No, she uses kind of electrical stimulation, which is nothing like pulse electromagnetic field therapy. Okay. It, this is very low frequencies, um, harmonic different waves that have no voltage spikes that are similar to the voltage or the electrical energy of individual cells. And all cells have their own frequencies. So that's how for cells talk back and forth between themselves as well as generate chemicals called cytokines. So they can talk in a variety of ways, but these frequencies, when they are promoted in with cells that are damaged, actually are healing to the cell membrane, improves oxygenation of the cell, it improves uh, the ion transfer in and out of the cell, and it improves what's called the electron transport chain that actually generates the energy that creates ATP inside the cell. So it's very exciting. It's, um, the research is 20 years old. So there's lots of research and it's just coming to become more medically oriented in the medical literature rather than more alternative, which it used to be. Interesting. Well, I'll definitely check it out. I, I mean, I do everything I can to help her. She's of course. 
pretty much uh, carnivore with some keto foods in there. We do a pretty high fat diet for her. Um, we've did, started her on paleo when she was very young. When she was first diagnosed, I was immediately uh, off gluten and dairy and straight to paleo. And uh, she has perfect teeth. So you're a dentist. She, from a very young age, I was feeding her grass fed beef and a lot of fat and uh, just kind of instinctively did that. I have a small jaw. I've got crowded bottom teeth, even though I had uh, braces. It's just, I know I was very nutrient deficient growing up when my jaw was developing, but she's, my husband and I both are like, I don't think she needs any braces. She's got a gorgeous, gorgeous set of teeth. And I think yeah. So, you know, you're <laughs> absolutely right. When you put the right nutrients into the body, especially at the right age, the body is going to take care of itself. And, you know, if you look at primal ancestors, the jaw bones of primal ancestors from 10 to 20,000 years ago, there's hardly any bone disease. There's hardly any tooth decay. There's a lot of tartar, which means the plaque is there. Dental plaque is healthy, by the way, until it's not. Absolutely healthy. It's protective. So why do, do we get gum disease and tooth decay? It's because of the bad diet and the chemicals and everything else. When you're feeding your daughter good nutritious food, she's not going to have gum disease or tooth decay. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because she's very sensory, uh, you know, protective of her mouth. And mm -hmm. so I've all, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to deal with the dentist and, and all the cavities and stuff that I see a lot of these kids getting because of poor diet. That's one thing that we've done with her from day one is, you know, we've got to eat healthy. Being vegetarian is not an option for you. <laughs> No. Thankfully, she'll eat her meat. She likes her meat and she'll, her and I eat beef fat before bed. That's our snack. I have a uh, frozen beef fat in the freezer. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we sit on the couch and eat, eat beef fat like it's ice cream. It's our little bedtime snack. I can't believe she eats it, but she I love that. I love that. Yeah. And you said that you do eat dairy? A, a little bit. She doesn't eat any dairy. Yeah. If I eat dairy, I'll have a teeny little bit of goat cheese every now and then, but that's, that's it. You know, we just, we don't do dairy. So Good. especially her. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know that, um, I don't know if you or she can clean her mouth, but when you brush her teeth, you do not need toothpaste. Okay, or, good. I just use like a little charcoal. I use the Redmond's like charcoal paste. Yeah. So, the so I would not personally recommend that. I would just use um, some mineral water, dip the toothbrush in mineral water and clean her mouth. You don't have to have any of the toothpaste. I don't like um, um, binders, activated charcoal or bentonite clay. Uh, of course, the people that make it say it only removes the bad stuff and not the good stuff. Well, binders do bind to minerals. And so you're going to get some of the minerals that are in the saliva or maybe the dental plaque to get absorbed and you're going to lose it. I, you don't need that. The only thing that you need is a good toothbrush, soft bristle toothbrush. I like the electric brushes like the Braun or the Sonicare. Um, they're easy, they're efficient, they're soft. Just regular water. You can, if you want, you can dip the toothbrush in a little bit of coconut oil, a little bit of baking soda, and it'll clean a little bit better, but it's not critical. Um, if you need a flavor, I don't, I don't recommend really putting in a flavor. I don't like flavors. So, I've, yeah. Yeah, that's why I did the charcoal because I just, any sweet in my mouth, I just don't like it. I don't, I don't, I won't even lick an envelope. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not even sure what they put on that envelope, but yeah. it's disgustingly yeah. sweet. So there's something wrong in that envelope. Definitely. Yeah, adhesive. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. You're doing all the right things. I'm doing my best, you know, we. <laughs> That's all we can do. And we just keep on keeping on though. I mean, your story is just so inspiring how you've just persevered and continued to learn and now you're helping other people. And so I can't wait to share this chat with, with my viewers. I know that they're going to get a lot out of it. Um, any final thoughts or anything else that we didn't talk about that you want to just put out there? Well, I think the gut microbiome is a critical element. And again, like I told you, this book, that I wrote called Is Your Gut Killing You really goes into the details and it even explains how to do things. Um, I wrote another book called Better Belly Blueprint. That's my take on a carnivore diet with a few other um, extras that I've added. Um, but if a person is in a life-threatening situation, uh, especially cancer diagnoses, mm -hmm. I strongly recommend to seek out 
other opinions, get other ideas and do research on PubMed. Basically, if you have a diagnosis name, put that name in and uh, use the word therapy or um, uh, alternative therapy or whatever, and see all the research papers that have been written on that topic. And you can read the abstracts and get ideas of what are, people are doing all around the world that you will never hear from your oncologist. Mm -hmm. And that way you can get a better feel of where you want to go. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure to link both of your books below the video, as well as your website. And just so people can reach out and contact Super. you. And this has been really awesome. Thank you so much. For oh, it's been a pleasure. It's been great meeting you. Good luck. Good luck to your daughter. I'm sure she's going to do well. Thank you. I appreciate that. You take